Thanks for joining us for another installment of Anchors Away. We've got a lot to talk about today. We've got a holiday on the way and some other things that are happening in the news we want to get to. Panel is here, Ashley Ketz, Mallory Harden, Mallory Brooks. Both. That's my remember. gosh. Yeah, that's I've done that in a long that. time. <laughs> and uh, Keith Monahan. Uh, thanks again for uh, taking out some time to talk about this. Um, one thing we're going to talk about, um, DJ Williams uh, at the latest Razorback game um, observed something that has gotten uh, a lot of press, at least on, uh, I would say press, but a lot of activity on social media. We're going to talk about that. Also, violence in Little Rock. Uh, talk about an uptick uh, over the last several days. We've seen a lot of homicides, uh, Little Rock police homicide detectives working very hard trying to solve some of these things. And of course, Thanksgiving's coming up, so we'll get to that. But first, the DJ Williams uh, thing. What, apparently what happened, correct me if I'm wrong if you guys know, um, prior to the game, uh, and he's there as a, an observer for the uh, Pig Trail Nation, noticed uh, two players, before the game, starting to flirt or fraternize with some of the cheerleaders of the opposing team, uh, trying to get phone numbers, maybe something like that. And this kind of feathered into some of the something that he's noticed all season long, because he's also an analyst, uh, that you know, there's been a lack of focus on the field. Uh, this certainly plays right into that. Um, what, whatever happens to the players is going to happen to the players. The coach is going to take care of that. But then DJ starts getting some heat because he brought shed some light on this, um, which I personally think is unfair. I mean, you don't go shooting the messenger. This is something he saw happen. He's kind of like, hey, when I talk about focus on the field, this is the kind of thing that obviously shows that there's no focus on the field. But then, guys, shooting the messenger. I mean, I think that's beyond. It's almost like, now let's make an issue about the messenger, not an issue about the issue. Mm -hmm. Right. And that issue, if, correct me if I'm wrong too, I mean, I felt like he didn't want to expose those two players. He mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that it was dealt with internally, which did happen. Mm -hmm. The coach suspended the two players. Mm -hmm. It is now public information. We know who those two players were. But DJ never released the photos. That was his choice. Um, even though DJ revealed last night that he had some pressure to turn over the mm -hmm. fo photos yeah. and make them public. Um, but that's something as a former athlete and someone who knows that how these kinds of things can stay with you for life, especially on social media. That mm -hmm. would follow them and haunt them for the rest of their lives, and that's why he yeah. felt it wasn't a good idea to release the pictures. And, and that was noble on his part, but also it was you know, part of his job to say, hey, here's something that probably can explain why we've had such a bad season because our players are not focused mm -hmm. to do what they're supposed to do. Not that they're paid athletes, but they're on scholarship. They're supposed to show up. They're given everything by the school and the alumni to perform um, to the best of their ability, uh, athletically and academically. This is unacceptable behavior. And if you know DJ, uh, any heat that he is getting, uh, s someone who will say they're, you know, he's ratting them out. If you know DJ, he cares about Arkansas about as much as anyone I know and loves the Razorbacks and only wants the very, very best. And mm -hmm. the very best for the players because he knows what life after football is like. And so mm -hmm. he wants the very best for them. So he is watching out for them and cares for them so much. And I think anyone who knows them knows that and knows that he only wants the best for this team, for the coach, for the players. A little bit of well, tough love, but a tough love. Yes, he, he comes sure. from a different perspective than, mm -hmm. than we do. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's like, hey, guys, get your head in the game. Yes, you know, maybe win some games and you wouldn't have to, you know, go look for a phone number. They'll come looking for you. <laughs> exactly. Um, but Keith, it would be like somebody, you know, a farmer blaming you for a bad crop because of the mm -hmm. bad forecast or, yeah. a, you know, a forecast that may have gone I mean, I, I don't want to crucify these guys. They're no, they're, they're kids. They're, they're young adults. They're guys. Guys do what guys do. Having said that, there's a time and place for everything. Also, having said that, maybe it could have been handled a bit more privately. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, it shouldn't have come out at all, and right. handled completely internally, where the coach just lights them up, suspends them for inappropriate conduct. I don't know. It, it's kind of tough. It's a it's a tough call. You want the guys to have their head in their game, but they're guys. You guys see a pretty girl, you know. But then right. again, they should be playing the game, but I don't want them to get crucified. But on the other hand, you know, some things I, you know, I learned in the military and you learn in, in business, you know, you praise in public and you correct in private. Mm -hmm. So maybe we shouldn't even heard about it. I mean, that's a way to look Pause. at it, too. That's the other side. That is the mm -hmm. other but, side. But just the same. I mean, it, it would be like someone, you know, getting mad at you because it rained. Hey, I said it was going to rain. It rained. Yeah. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what I see. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and kind of DJ's job at that particular point, was he's observing the game, all aspects of it. So, right. at, at any rate. But, um, mm -hmm. and talking about doing the right thing and, uh, and moving information along, um, over the weekend, I think in Little Rock, we saw five homicides. I think in one case, there were three people uh, killed. 
And this is something time and time again, and we talked about the reward that's being offered, $50,000 for information on uh, who may be responsible for these things. And we hear it over again, the people in these areas say, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to snitch. I'm not going to rat people out. Or if I know something, I'm not going to say anything. A lot of times people are worried about their own safety. But if there's ever a time <laughs> you know, to let loose of information that you have, it certainly is now. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you see anything that could potentially go wrong, because if you don't, if you know someone was involved in a crime as heinous as murder, you should tell somebody because chances are that person may be involved in another one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keith, I mean, you know, we're I mean, we're, we're dads, and, and I know I if mean, we saw something. Communities have to take responsibility for what goes on in the neighborhoods. That's why neighborhood watches are a good idea. Uh, that's why uh, national night out is a good idea. You get to know your neighbors. You get to care about your neighbors. It's not a matter of, of snitching on somebody. It's snitching when you, maybe the guy didn't rake all the leaves in the yard. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a murder, mm -hmm. or these are murders. I mean, these are, these are ends of people's lives. Yeah. And it's, it's not, you know, and there's probably some fear in certain areas of retribution, but there are ways to anonymously provide that information. Mm -hmm. You have the anonymous tip lines. Uh, you need to do it because it's going to touch your family eventually if you don't take care of it. I know in our neighborhood, we do watch out for things. We see a vehicle that doesn't belong at somebody's house. We know the neighbors or we know neighbors that know neighbors and you just keep an eye out. You know, if somebody backs a moving truck into my neighbor's house and he's out of town, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm of course going to question should that guy be moving out all his TVs? And it's not being nosy. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, no, it's, it's being like, it's being just alert. It's mm -hmm. being caring and it's being caring for your neighbors because you would want somebody to do that for you. Mm -hmm. Most definitely to, and it makes everybody safer when, when criminals know that they can't just get away with it. Yeah. And, and again, there's fear of retribution and, and you see that a lot in a lot of places in the country, but there are, as I said, anonymous ways to, to get that information out. Mm -hmm. This has been a problem. It seems like a deep-rooted problem, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. you've probably seen it before going back into the 90s. Oh, yeah. That it, people just don't, sometimes don't talk. And mm -hmm. then you look at the victims, and especially these parents, these last three murders um, over the weekend, they were children pretty much. Breaks your heart. Um, 20 mm -hmm. years old and younger. I can't imagine being a parent walking around. Maybe there's groups of people that know who did it, but no one's talking. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you have an idea of who the suspect could be, but but no one is ever going to provide that information so police can, can I do mean, their you, job. You don't have to have a picture of somebody doing something. If you have heard rumors, let the police follow up on those rumors. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, let the, the detectives, the investigators know about what things have been heard. And I know Little Rock tries mm -hmm. to do a lot of community policing. They, they have officers in neighborhoods, familiar with neighborhoods. Um, they will follow up on those leads uh, even if it's just you heard a rumor, because rumors have sometimes mm -hmm. an element of fact to them. Sure, there's there's always a grain of truth in, the, in a lot of things that mm -hmm. get tossed around. And, and it's, you know, constantly reporting this stuff is, you know, while we're insulated here, you know, in our studio, I mean, that that's exhausting too, and I mean, it, it really is. It gets it, tough. And like Ashley said, when, when it becomes teenagers, when it becomes children, you see these families, grieving families, mothers and fathers, just hearing the most devastating news of their lives. And in a lot of cases, someone knows something um, it's just mm -hmm. getting getting people to talk. And, uh, I know yeah, police I, let me, let me really want. That, in yes. all cases, somebody knows somebody something. Knows something. In somebody knows something. Somebody has case, to. Yes. Somebody yeah. knows something mm -hmm. that could be helpful. Absolutely. And you can stay anonymous. Police work hard to have those mm -hmm. anonymous tip lines, and you are anonymous um, whenever you call. Yeah. And I mean, and the, the, the gun violence is you know is crazy. It's one of those things that if, if you've got a pension to you know to play with guns, you like guns or something like that, join the military. Yeah, they, they got plenty of guns. Go to a range and, uh, and, you know, and practice and out there because I mean. whenever a gun is used, it, nothing good's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And generally, not in that way. Yeah. If you pull a trigger on a, on a gun, you're you're ending someone's life and you're essentially ending yours too because you will get caught and you'll be in prison for the rest of your life if not put to death yourself. So, and, and all the families, ways to solve all the problems. families of both sides mm -hmm. of yeah. the crime get get devastated. Yeah. I mean, it, it was heartbreaking. To hear, to, to hear uh, this dad speak. I don't know if we could bring up some of his sound, but this was an emotional Three people plea. Died. Oh my God! <laughs> Man, these people don't care about nothing. They killing people for fun. <laughs> look at my, look at my wife. Look at my daughter. It's, it's one of those things. I mean, and it, it's got to stop. If you know something, or you think you know someone who knows something, encourage them to come forward. And it, as mentioned, the fifty thousand dollar reward is out there for information being offered by the city of Little Rock. Uh, you can pass that information along anonymously, not a problem there.
Uh, on to the lighter side of, of life. Thanksgiving. Yay. Is, uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is upon us. Um, this is a great conversation we had the other day that <laughs> someone mentioned Christmas and, and we Christmas haven't even decorations made it to Thanksgiving and things like that. Yet. Poor I'm not quite there yet. Uh, poor Thanksgiving <laughs> seems like it's just getting, you know. Oh, it, get, well. it gets the short end of the drumstick, yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> That's <laughs> for sure. Just skip the turkey and go straight to Christmas. Miles yeah. Standish would be so upset. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a great time to kind of, it's always been, you know, it, the history, at least of, of my family, mm -hmm. time to slow down, relax, mm -hmm. enjoy family, friends, and just take it easy for a while. And uh, But I do remember as a kid that, after dinner and everything, then all of a sudden a neighbor might come over and then the ads would come out, you know. Oh. And at that, at that point it was just the newspaper, yes. you know, what's going to be on sale tomorrow. Um, no one went shopping on Thanksgiving because oh, no. everything was closed, uh, which is kind of starting to change right now. But do you think that that's, I mean, this, this has been talked around a lot, you know, all of a sudden Thanksgiving is becoming the shopping weekend, which it always has been, but more so now. I don't remember that part of it growing up. I don't think it was that no, it's so that's that big. <laughs> fairly new, especially with Thanksgiving and now stores opening at six o'clock. I think some open at four, which I hate it for people that, of course, in our industry, uh, the news never stops. Uh, we always work right. um, several holidays as well. But now all these people that have to go in for retail, like one oh, day, give no. everybody one day with your family. With all those working first responders, police, oh, um, doctors, Everyone, thank you, thank you for working that day. Some, but let's try to keep as many people at home as possible. Some um, some businesses I've seen they've gone the trend where it's like you know what no we're closed on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. because we want our employees to be at home with their families yeah. so we're just not going to be open. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, one could argue that the shopping experience is often done with families. That's true. You have a meal and you take off and you do your shopping all together. So just hey. if you do head out, just be civil. Oh man! Yeah. Oh goodness! We're gonna see the video. We'll see the there, video. Uh -huh. Someone getting trampled video pushing and shoving it's somewhere. It's always over sheets every year. Yes. Thanksgiving or Black sheets. Friday I mean. on the scanner. We listen to police calls that come in, and we yes. hear them, and they're always over, over sheets. sheets. I'm like, how? <laughs> how? What is the threat count of these sheets that people are <laughs> not each other over? That's Egyptian cotton that's yeah. exactly. or something. I, I think don't know. Very when fancy. we were at Walmart one year, <laughs> the sheets were so popular. I left my wallet or my purse in a shopping cart in the middle of the store. No one even touched it. Because everyone was looking at the sheets. They were looking at the sheets. At the sheets. <laughs> so, thank goodness. Oh, big thing you're lucky. thankful for this Thanksgiving? I don't know. My family and my health, you know, um, and, and that's pretty much it. Living in the United States. Right. We're, we're, we're not perfect. We have blemishes. But I would rather be nowhere else than yeah. in this country celebrating Thanksgiving. You know, I love other countries. I travel a lot mm -hmm. overseas. I love experiencing the other cultures. But there's something so American about Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, that uh, it, it's well, just the pilgrims, you know, they, mm -hmm. they came here and yeah, mm -hmm. celebrated with the, with the, the Native Indians. Americans yeah. and, yeah. and the, the cooperation, getting them through that that hard year. You know, I mean, um, that, that's what I'm thankful for. Mel? Yeah. Uh, family, I mean, it is. It's so cliche, but it is just a, it's a very special year of little girl and a baby boy who um, is very precious. So my husband, my kids, very thankful, thankful for this job, thankful mm -hmm. for coworkers. Ashley and I wanted to show a picture. Speaking of what we're thankful for, Our I don't sweet know Sweet little ready. friendships. Look at oh, this, look at how that. precious. This is Grace Ann, my daughter, and Avon, Ashley's daughter, and Lily, who's just the cutest thing ever. left out. And they're in ballet together, and I'm so thankful for friends and at work um, and, and out of work, and to have little mm -hmm. girls going through fun things like ballet together, which is just about as cute as it gets. And I'll say I'm thankful for all the teachers out there that invest in our kids yes. um, or who mm -hmm. have in the past. I mean, my goodness, um, just watching those little girls do their dance mm -hmm. on Saturday. I mean, those those teachers are amazing. So yeah. I'm so thankful for them because, you know, most of our time is spent with our coworkers. Um, we're mm -hmm. away from our families. And so you yeah. guys are like a second family. I'm thankful for you guys. That's so true. Family and friends. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. kind of what it's all about. And I'm thankful, obviously, for my wife and my daughter, stepson. Uh, his wife and uh, and and my family, you know, they're around the country. But it's one of those things that we've just kind of, you know, underscored it. It's not what you have or where you're going. Uh, it's who you're going to be spending time with. That's mm -hmm. what's more important: family and, and friends. And, and I just want to point out, you know, we're talking about family and friends and work friends. You know, we've all worked at a lot of places, and I just think here the way we react here is the way we react off camera too. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a show. No, I mean, this you, know, is, you know, we'll you know, get, go in the dressing room, you know, and just chat about 
the latest gossip. Or That's why we just we decided we would put a camera yeah, on it. Let's put a camera on it. I mean, boy, I'll tell you, you would like to hear the conversations that we don't have. <laughs> those those are pretty juicy. That, you maybe, you want to join a, in. I that'll bet. be a web extra. <laughs> a web that'll extra. be a web extra sure. when uh -huh. the boss is out of town for a oh, couple yeah. of weeks. And offline. Know. Offline. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thanks again. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank you very much for uh, clicking on Anchors Away this week. Certainly hope you have a very happy and safe Thanksgiving, everyone. Till next time.